Sorry, and today we're looking at the Great Oxygenation Event. The conditions of Earth are constantly changing. When we compare the environment of the world today with the climate four billion years ago, it is drastically different, as shown. As you can see, there was no oxygen present in the atmosphere four billion years ago, rendering life on Earth uninhabitable. Or was it? We're now going to cross to our presenter in the field, Aidan, with Dr. Hooper. Thanks, Daniel. I'm here with Professor Hooper, who's going to tell us a bit about life at the very earliest stages on Earth. We know that about four billion years ago, there was water on Earth, and that would indicate some sort of atmosphere. Can you tell us about the type of atmosphere that was on Earth at that time? Yeah, sure. The atmosphere um, back then was very different to what we have now. There was a high amount of nitrogen present in the atmosphere, um, which is similar today. However, the amount of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide um, was so great that it would have been uninhabitable for humans. Really? Yeah, so, but most importantly, the amount of oxygen in the atmosphere was um, very, very minimal. That seems, seems dangerous to life as we know it. Does that just mean at that time there was no life on Earth, or were there any sort of small things around that you can tell us about? No, not at all. There are actually many microbes present in these anoxic conditions. These microbes are called anaerobes. Mm. Uh, anaerobes are organisms that are able to produce their own energy in the absence of oxygen. Uh, so this means that instead of using oxygen as an electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, uh, they use supplementary molecules to transport electrons um, to aid their respiration. Are you able to give us an example of an organism that is able to survive in these seemingly incredibly harsh conditions? Of course. One of the first microorganisms actually known was a group called the methanogens. They did not require oxygen uh, to respire. In fact, oxygen actually inhibits their growth. Wow. Instead, these organisms use a respiration process called methanogenesis or biomethanation. This involves taking carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and using it as an electron acceptor to produce energy and methane as products. Not all of these are prehistoric. Some methogens, such as Methanobrevibacter smithii and Methanospharae stradamane, are actually close to home and living in our stomachs. Anaerobes are not limited to methogens though. There are many examples I could give you. G. bacter, which reduces iron 3 plus to iron 2 plus, mm -hmm. uh, and E. coli, which reduces nitrate to nitrite. Hmm. Uh, each of these is an example of organisms that do not use oxygen in the electron transport chain but still manage to produce plenty of energy and there are so many more. That is incredibly fascinating. Now I believe we've been taken to this particular location for a reason. Could you tell us about these rocks that we're standing in front of? Yeah, I'm glad you asked, but before I answer that question however, I need to tell you a classic tale as we now know is called the Great Oxygenation Event. That sounds impressive. As we now know, in the past there was very little oxygen present in the atmosphere. However, today it is abundant and able to sustain life. This was no miracle. This was the work of a group of photosynthetic microbes known as cyanobacteria. By about 2.7 billion years ago, these helpful little organisms had become a prevalent life form. The reason these organisms were so helpful to us was the fact that they utilised carbon dioxide and water in the atmosphere, along with sunlight in respiration, to produce energy with oxygen as a byproduct. This was one huge step in the evolution for life as oxygen levels increased in the atmosphere, a layer of ozone began to form. This stabilised the climate on Earth by blocking harsh UV rays coming from the sun. As well as this, the, pres the presence of oxygen gas on the Earth gave rise to a huge step in the diversity of life, specifically organisms that use oxygen in respiration, which we now more commonly refer to as aerobes. Now to answer your question, if you look closely at these rocks, you will see a reddish brown pigment through them, as you can see here. This was caused by the reaction of water and oxygen in the environment with the iron in the rock itself. This reaction took place over, over millions of years um, and is the evidence of cyanobacteria being present with oxygen in the atmosphere greatly increasing also. These reddish, these reddish brown pigments uh, are called banded um, iron formations. Today we know that if we see these formations, uh, an oxygen producing organism is uh, present um, in, the, um, in the area. Wow, I never knew that bacteria was so important to life on Earth today. We rarely do have cyanobacteria to thank for our present place on Earth. Back to you, Daniel. Thanks, Aiden. 
Microbial life has proven its ability to make use of various elements in order to survive the world scarce of oxygen. Thus, they have diversified over many years so that microbes may survive with or without oxygen, or in some cases, both. Oxygen, O2, is one of the most important elements required to sustain life. Without it, we would die. You can breathe easily though, thanks to those early cyanobacteria.